saying that the God we serve is not a quiet, sleeping God? The God that we serve has a voice. And it's loud. And it's boisterous. Much like what you could envision thunder to be like. Can I tell you that He also hears your voice? There would be some people that would tell you and, and encourage you even to come to church. And just sit there. There would be some that would encourage you, Sister Aunt Cindy, that you can praise Him like this. Did anybody hear me say anything? But I did in my head. I said, Jesus, I praise you. Can I tell you, nowhere in the Scripture does it say, praise God just in your thoughts or in your mind. Right. So if anybody wonders, why do you encourage us to worship? Why do you encourage us to be vocal? Why do you encourage us to come to the threshing floor and stir things up in the Holy Ghost? Why do you encourage people to, to praise? Why do you encourage people and provoke people? I don't know. <laughs> to walk around this church, why at times will you see somebody run? Can I tell you, we haven't seen that in a while here in this church. We haven't. We haven't. I'm not really sure why, but we just have not. You might say, well, I can't run. You can move your feet fast. I bet on Black Friday when you're doing shopping, those of you that, that do that, I bet y'all are just turtling along looking for that good deal. Just barely putting one foot in front of another, right? We sing it often, and I can remember you, Sister Teresa. He healed my body, and he told me to run on. And I can remember just about every time we sing that, that touches you because the next thing you know, you're running around this church. Why do we? Why do you worship the way that you worship? Because God has been good to me. Oftentimes. Someone's praise can be a report card or a progress report of what God has done in their life. And they refuse to sit down lonely. Can I tell you that when you see me worship, I'm just thinking about how good God is to me. I'm thinking about how good God is and how miraculous He is. And that He's filled me with the Holy Ghost and power. And I can't sit still and I can't be quiet. When someone is still, they need prayer. And there's elders in the church that can't move like they used to, and they move as good as they can. Right, Sister Aunt Faye? But a flowing river is not stagnant and is not stale. A flowing river is moving. In this house, we're in the midst of a flowing river. Why do you worship? Because we're in the flow of that river. And it's gone past on these eight acres and ankle deep. Like in Ezekiel. And it's gone past just wasted, but we're swimming in the flow right. of a river on these eight acres. And I don't know about anybody else, but I don't want to just get over on the side of the bank. Come on. I want to get in the midst of it. I want to get in neck deep. I want to get in where it's over my head. Into the mighty flow of the Holy Ghost. Somebody clap your hands and I want everybody to be involved in that. 
We got our tickets a month and a day in advance thinking that that would be good enough. We were proven wrong. We were proven very wrong. All except for Brother Jody and Sister Rob. They got advanced to the supreme level. But next year we will be getting on there as soon as the tickets are on sale and we're just going to reserve several, several, several. Because I would like for all of the church to be there. If we would, I'll stand for the reading of the Word of God. Isaiah 43 and 11. I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me there is no Savior. Right. Anybody know Him as a Savior? I have declared and I have saved and I have showed when there was no strange God among you, He was working in our lives. Therefore, ye are my witnesses. Anybody a witness of God? This morning, saith the Lord that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am He. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Or the word would say, I will work, who can hinder it? One more time, I want you to lift your hands, and I want you to lift your voices. Let your voices ring out to the living God that we serve this morning. Mighty God. And you may be sinning in the house of the living God, but we're not going to be quiet. You know, I'm prone to saying that we're not quiet during the praise and worship song service. And when the minister and preached the word of God is coming before the saints, we're not going to be quiet on that. I wonder this morning if you would ask yourself, will you be a hindrance? And there might be some in the house that just said a hindrance. What's he talking about? I'm glad that you, you thought that because I'm going to share that with you. A hindrance is something that interferes with the action and slows down the progress. Not me, Brother Zach. Somebody else needs to declare that, not me. Not me. I am available this morning. I am available this morning. I shall not be a hindrance. You see, I'm ready. I'm open. I'm desperate. Yeah. Anybody else? Right. But I shall not be a hindrance this morning. A, a, a stumbling block this morning. A blockade this morning. I'm not going to be a hindrance to the flow of the Holy Ghost on these eight acres. I believe it because I've seen it. When you began to be a hindrance to the flow on these eight acres, God will remove you and replace you. Come on now. I'm trying to provoke us and encourage us this morning. I am not going to be a hindrance. I, my mouth is not going to be a hindrance. Somebody? Come on now. My lifestyle is not going to be a hindrance. Can I tell you that doubts, doubting will make you a hindrance? Gossip will make you a hindrance. Undealt with sin in your life will make you a hindrance. Not just on these eight acres, but for what God is wanting to work through you in your own life. Today and in the days to come. How many knows that we're connected? We're all connected in this place. What one person does connects to the next. Mighty God, I'm available this morning. Somebody needs to declare that I am available. I am available for you to use in a mighty way. My family, I'm making them available this morning. My thoughts, I'm making them available unto you, living God. My actions, my ways, the way that I pay attention in church, I'm making it available to you this morning. Can I tell you that when you when you notice a hindrance, 
in this house on these eight acres, I wish that you would just go to pleading the blood of Jesus right. over that hindrance. Why? Because I want us to all elevate together even higher than what we did a few weeks ago when deliverance was in this house. But you will not elevate. Listen to me. You will not elevate if you are a hindrance. Sometimes people are a hindrance and they don't even realize that they are a hindrance. I mean, that's just being, you know, being honest. I shared with some people this morning, or not this morning, but over the weekend, when someone that is angry comes to you, oftentimes if they're one on one or they're texting you and they're angry, what do you do in the place of that? You get angry. If someone is being a, we'll just say, if someone has a bad attitude and they come at you with a bad attitude, we're flesh, Sister Melissa. You come at them with what? Meek and mild. No, you do not. But we're going to do better. You come at them with a bad attitude. Can I tell you, that's a transference of spirits. You get, when someone is angry and comes at you and you become angry, honey, baby doll, you have taken on that angry spirit. You've taken on that angry spirit just as this, when somebody comes to you and they're, they're smiling. You take on that spirit. That's a transference of spirits. Can I tell you that taking on a bad spirit will cause you to be a hindrance? Not just in your life, but on these eight acres. But I've come this morning to tell you that I am pleading the blood of Jesus over every single one of us under the sound of my voice this morning. Anybody that would go back to hear. Not just the parts that are easy to 
right here to Sister Pam. But the word, right. even the challenging parts, brother Ben, even the part that 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 separates us from the world, even that part. Yeah. Why? Because I want this church filled with power. Yeah. I want this church filled with glory. Yeah. I want this church filled with an anointing that when someone enters those two back doors that needs deliverance. He's looked over 
messing with some dirty animals, and you know with him out there on that field for weeks at a time, you know David stunk, Sister Melissa, with a physical stench. But he was looked over this one time because Daddy said, this, this my son, he, he's the one. He's the one. Anybody ever been looked over? Anybody ever been picked over? My servant God, even. And said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. You see, Daddy Jesse qualified his son. This is, he's going to be the anointed king. I just know it. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or the height of his stature. I kind of feel like he probably bowed his chest down a little bit in front of the prophet. Huh? Daddy thinks that I'm worthy of being king. Oh, I can't wait to be king. I'm going to say he had just a little bit of pep in his step because when, when daddy shows a little bit of tension and when daddy kind of lifts you up a little bit, you feel good about yourself. Much like when King Jesus puts a little pep in your step, when you let him, I said when you let him, and you're not a hindrance, you walk just a little bit different, and you talk just a little bit different when you're not a hindrance. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for he looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on his heart. Can I tell you that does not mean clothing as it has been preached to derail people to being a hindrance. That's the truth. It was talking about the, the, his countenance, his, the way that he looked, his face, his stature. I'm going to say the way that pride had, had inflated his chest just a little bit. Because I have refused him. Can I tell you that my outward presence does not qualify me this morning? Just like yours. It's the condition of my heart and your heart that makes me available to be used in the flow of God and in the Holy Ghost. It is the condition of my heart that makes me available to be anointed of God this morning. My God. Is conviction falling in the house this morning? I hope so, even on myself. As I was preparing for this message, I began to just cry, I just say to the Lord, fix my heart. Fix my heart. Fix my heart. Why? Because, Brother Zach, I don't want to be a hindrance to the flow of the Holy Ghost. It's a heart condition. Daddy Jason just knew they stand tall, proud, and upright. Surely they are anointed. No. My mom put it years ago. She used to let certain grandchildren, great grandchildren, do things for her. That's how she put it, remember? My task was she would let me take her to Walmart and she would let me get her gas for her. And we had had two visitors one Sunday morning. And everybody, well, everybody that knew, knew her well knew that she only got gas. I'm sorry, Sister Felicia, when you go back and hear this. But it's not my mom put it, it ain't on me. I went where she let me go. What is that? Shell. My mom put it, I always got shell gas. Why shell gas? Because that's what Daddy Lloyd said was the best gas. Now, Daddy Lloyd had been dead double digit years, but my mom put, she still stuck by that. If Daddy Lloyd said it, it was the same as gospel. We got in the van to go get gas at Shell, and my mom put, said, Son, who was that big man that came to church? You know what I'm talking about. And I said, Mama, I, I don't know who that was. She said, well, he was a preacher, wasn't he? And I said, well, I don't know. I don't know anything about the man other than who he was with. She said, well, son, he was carrying a Bible. And I said, well, Mama, if I go and stand in a carport, that does not make me a car. 
She laughed from the church parking lot all the way to Shell Gas over there. Just because I'm standing, just because I'm present on the threshing floor does not make me anointed and it does not make me available. My heart makes me available to be anointed and to be used of the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And in this house, I would to God that everyone in here would just rise up and say, I'm not going to be a hindrance. And if I ever have a hindrance, God forgive me, forgive me and help me, God. Convict me and move me, God, to get out of the way of what you're trying to birth in my life. Sister Tina Michelle Ward, I don't want to get in the way of anybody's deliverance. Come on. I don't want to bring satire and goofiness inside the sanctuary. I don't want to bring chit chat and gossip inside the sanctuary. I don't want to bring a conversation inside the sanctuary about how my week has gone or about what happened at work or what didn't happen at work. I don't want to be I'm telling you things that are, that are causing us to be hindered in this place. Why am I telling you that? Because I love each and every one of you. And I want to encourage us not to be the hindrance. Can I tell you that I've been a hindrance before? Mm, me too. Would you give me an example? I'll be glad to. <laughs> when I have not prayed enough, I've been a hindrance to you. Come on now. When I've watched things or listened to things, that's a hindrance to the flow of the Holy Ghost. Now I know the messages that God has been putting on me to give to the congregation has been tied. But God is drawing a line in the sand. Even this morning. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Mighty God. Somebody say glory this morning. And I've said it before. We don't mind binge watching. So the days of, of a you know, 20 second sermon that them's over with unless God says move move forward. Anybody that's a diabetic in here, there's candy out in the forum. Hello? Sister Tina, will you give me another one of those red, red cords? Sister Robin, will you give me another one? Sister Pam, will you give me another one, please? Just lay them, lay them across there. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, Holy Ghost. Sister Tina, get another one. Y'all just keep going. Can I tell you that there are names on these cords of red? Yeah. And whether they realize it or not, they are desperate this morning. They're desperate this morning for a touch that only God can birth in their lives. I won't ever mind on Jesus this morning. I feel prodded in the Lord this morning that God is drawing a line in the sand. This is what we're using to draw that line in the sand with. On one side, we've got, we've got people can I just be real with y'all this morning? Ladies, if y'all would, I want y'all to stay up here with me. Can I be real with y'all this morning? Somebody that loves you will be real with you. I heard it said best just a few months ago that we're loving people all the way to heaven. Loving people all the way to hell. I, at first, I was like, ain't sister in faith. What? By not preaching the truth, too. By not drawing the proverbial line in the sand. Can I tell you this morning that there are names. There are people in your life that is dependent upon you. Dependent upon you. Not being a hindrance. To the flow in their life. Right. Sister 
Teresa, will you go get me some black markers, wherever they might be? <laughs> Lift your hands in the house. We're a different church, and God has just made a shift in this morning's service.
around and under and through through us. That the, the God we serve, that he would convict us of being a hindrance. Why? Because I want to see God move in this house. We have the open duty of people filled with the Holy Ghost in 2023. I want to see that number double. And I refuse. I said I refuse for anybody to be a hindrance in this house of the living God. Anybody else can stand and say I refuse to let it go on. If I see it, I'm going to rebuke it.
not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but when someone has a, a, a father wound, it affects them. Whether they realize it or not, it affects them. They can often, often think of God treating them like their father did. Look it up. It's a sure thing. When someone has a, a father issue, they need deliverance of that hindrance. There's no shame in that. You couldn't help that. Children cannot help how their parents act or don't act. But I serve a God that when I remove myself from being a hindrance and make it my heart cleaned up, that I make myself available to be used of God and I can declare deliverance over that father wound. Come on now. I can declare deliverance over any wound. I can take authority over it. Why? Because there's power in the name of Jesus. But presence does not qualify you for that. A cleaned up heart makes you available. Somebody say, I'm available. I'm available because I have repented of every sin this morning. The pastor has drawn the line because I felt it pressed to the Holy Ghost to draw the line on the threshing floor. Sister Teresa, take those markers and put them over here on this concrete. I want you to wait and until God directs you and moves on your heart, I want you to go up and I want you to grab a, a, a magic marker, a permanent marker, and I want you to write the name of your prodigal on the concrete side. We're going to cover it all up. But I want you to, when God moves on you, because the hindrances have been removed from our lives this morning. Those of you that repented, I hope everybody in this house repented. I don't want any hindrances in this place. But when God lays it on your heart, I want you to take that magic marker anywhere up here and I want you to begin to write their names on this, on this concrete floor of the prodigals, of the people that need deliverance, of the people that you know needs a touch in their lives. Can I make it even more personal this morning? Some people that you want to see serving God on these eight acres. I want you to write them on this threshing floor up here. If someone needs help getting down there, Sister Pauletta Sue, you just tell them, write this name for them. She said, I can write the name. I'm not going to let anything hinder me. Come on. I want us to keep our minds on God. And I like where y'all are writing them at. It's on the opposite side of the line. On this side is a line of hindrance. On the opposite side is a side that is not hindered. And I'm believing for God to move over every single one of them. Somebody be with Sister Barbara and help her up when she needs up, please. When Samuel finds out that there's yet one more child out on the field of Jesse because God had told him, you go and you anoint one of Jesse's sons and I'm going to let you know which one it is. Sister Robin's getting more markers. Bless her Lord. Jesse tells him, yeah, I've got one more but he's just out there. He's just a little out there, Sister Teresa. He's just a little bit out there. Can I tell you that God will use people that are just a little bit out there? <laughs> I said God will use someone that is just a little bit out there. He will, Brother Corey. Somebody that has a, 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 tainted, a tainted past. He'll use that person for his glory if we will just get our heart right. Come on now, if we'll get our heart right, he will use us. He will anoint us. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance. Amen. 
and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise and anoint him. For this is he. Samuel was obedient. Samuel said, I'm not going to be a hindrance to what God is trying to anoint. Samuel had removed the hindrance spirit from his life. You know what that is? That's called your flesh. Come on. Your flesh is what keeps you from worshiping like you want to worship. Your flesh is what keeps you from receiving a gift of the Holy Ghost. Your flesh is a hindrance unto you. That's why you got it. Get it under subjection. The word says, and the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for he, for this is he. Then Samuel took him in the midst of his brethren. And the word says, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and he went back home to Ramah. Yes. It also says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Why did the Spirit of the Lord depart from Saul? Because Saul found himself disobedient. Saul found himself a hindrance to the flow of the Holy Ghost. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to be a hindrance. I know I've said that a few times. But I'm, real, I'm being real with you today. I don't want to be a hindrance. Why? Because when you're disobedient, the word tells me that the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul for his disobedience. We need to all just cry out, God help me to be obedient to thy whole word. Because when we're not, we're being a hindrance. Can I tell you this church is in a turnaround season? Jesus, 
The church, the word says, is the bride of Christ. And if you're a man in this service, and we've had men that I've spoke about that with before but from the platform, and they, it didn't go over well for them. When I refer to the church as being the bride of Christ, that's what the Word says. Right. Right. We cannot hinder the Word. Right. We cannot be a hindrance for the flow right. of the Holy Ghost. Right. If you're a man and it bothers you to be called the bride of Christ, you're on the opposite side of this line. You are hindered. Right. Your macho spirit has hindered you. Yep. And I wouldn't want to be in your shoes when the bridegroom calls us home. Because you're hindered. That flesh of yours has hindered you. Has made you feel funny about that. But the wise answer and say, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye, rather to them that sell it and buy it for yourselves. You've got to get the oil for yourself. I love my heritage and I speak about it often. And it, it is value to me. And in a broken season of my life, that heritage helped to get me in the right place. It did not save me, but it got me on the threshing floor. It led me, and I'm thankful for my heritage. But I cannot go to heaven. I cannot get up there and say, Well, God, my mama could. She, you know, she lived for you. And she she shored up the family. And my nana and papa, they, they lived for you and they blazed the way when people were making fun of them on the radio. All right. All right. Derogatorily calling them goose jabbers, and there's nothing to it. And yet they stood anyhow. They didn't mind to be called whatever. Why? Because they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they were not going to be hindered from serving God. But I could not go and, and meet Jesus because they stood. I could not go and, and, and stand before Jesus because my mother and father have lived for God for a very long time. It doesn't work like that. I've got to have the oil in my life. I cannot be a hindrance. The word says in verse 10, and while they were, and while they yourselves, and while they came, and they went to buy the bridegroom, came. How many knows that Jesus is on his way back? The bridegroom came, and they that were ready, they that had prepared, available. They went out with him to the marriage, to the celebration. And the door was shut. Can I tell you the door is just about shut? If God waits another 50 years for the Zachary and all back, well, the door is about to be shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, the ones that did not have enough oil to last them inside their vessel. And they say, Lord, Lord, open to us. How many knows we serve a merciful God today? But the door is about to shut. I say it again. The door is about to shut. And they came to him and said, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Or in other words, there's no intimacy there with you. I know you not. Jesus speaking in verse 13 says, Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. 1 Corinthians 15, 4-7. We're almost done. And we're fixing to make some declarations in this house. God's not through moving 1 Corinthians 15, 4 says, and that he was buried, Jesus was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, 
Then of the twelve, after that, he was seen of, uh, of above 500 brethren at once. I want you to remember that number, 500. Somebody say 500. <laughs> seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are falling asleep. Skipping to Luke 24 and 49. This is Jesus speaking again. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Anybody know what the promise is? The Holy Ghost. Just as real today as it was in the book of Acts, Brother Ricky Jolly. But you got to tarry in ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power on high. Acts the first chapter the 15th verse. And in those days Peter stood in the midst of the disciples and said the number of names together were about 120. That's where we get the number of people that were in that upper room that were being obedient. I want you to keep that number in your head, 120. Acts 2 and 1, and we can all just about quote it. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord and in one place. There was no hindrances there. There was not one hindrance there. Why? Because they were desperate for the promise of God to be gifted into their life. They were desperate people. They were unashamed to be obedient to what God had said. God in the flesh, Jesus told them. Can I tell you that obedience unifies a body of believers? Yeah. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house that they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. How do we know that they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Keep reading past the comma. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Now that was 120 of them. Where's the other 380 at? We go from Luke. The 24th chapter. There was 500. That witnessed. Jesus being raised. From the dead. Go back and read it for yourself. There was a low of 500. Is what it actually says. But when Jesus gave the mandate. I want you to go and tarry. In Jerusalem. In an upper room. And I want you to wait for the promise. Of the Holy Ghost to come down. There was only 120. There was only 120. That were obedient. What happened to the 380? They were hindered. Let's all stand and make our way to the threshing floor. We're going to have to move this brother. Such a time as this. Old and young alike. <coughs> Your brothers and sisters in Christ, and I want you to take this serious. Nobody step across the line yet, please. I want you to take this very serious. I don't want anybody to make a move. I don't want anybody to make a step over this line just because someone else is. Jesus. Jesus. It's time that we elevate in this house on these eight acres. It's time that we see people that we've been interceding for that's written right here and written on, these, on this concrete that we see God move. I'm just being honest and real with you this morning. But church, I've got to do my 
I've got to stop allowing the things of this world to hinder me from being obedient to the Word of God. I've got to stop it. I've got to put an end to me being a hindrance to what God is trying to birth. It might, your family member not, might not be in need of deliverance. And you better thank God for that. But your family member might need deliverance this morning. And God is able to move even when, even when we don't. Can I tell you that this morning? But can I tell you that when we remove the hindrances from our life, there is an anointing that flows. There is an anointing that makes us available to be used of God when we eliminate every hindrance that is making us disobedient of the Word of God. Sister Aunt Faye and I are listening to one Brother Lee Stone King talking about how God has already equipped us to be warriors for Him. Can I tell you that there's no anointed goofballs There's just not. Now outside the sanctuary, we can cut up. I can. I like to laugh. That's one of my most favorite things to do is laugh. Put you in a good place. Doesn't matter. Put you in a good mood. But can I tell you that this sanctuary on this threshing floor moving forward is not a place for laughter. It's not a place for games. It's not a place for chit chat. It's not a place for anything but removing myself from being a hindrance. I'm just being real. Well, you're old-fashioned. I sure am. Can I tell you I know what works, Sister Pam? Can I tell you that I feel that we are reaping the benefits of some saints that are, that are in our Hall of Fame. <laughs> some, saints, some saints that stood, rather than being a hindrance, they stood. Come on now. If you're wondering who, those, who the Hall of Fame is, when you leave the sanctuary, I want you to go look down that hallway right here. And that's, that's the Hall of Fame in this place. Can I tell you that there were some widowed women that did not have the finances that helped build this church? You just said they didn't have finances, but yet they helped build the church. And that's right. Because they refused, Sister Pam, to be a hindrance. They refused to, for what happened to them to hinder them from working for God. Can I tell you that obedience qualifies you? With grace and mercy, you don't have to do anything. There are others out there that would tell you that it's a, that's what it's all about. That is a lullaby of a false doctrine that will lay you down to sleep. And we ministered on that a few weeks ago about get up, arise, wake up, or sleep. But we've all, I hope that we have, we've all prayed a prayer of repentance. And now we're fixing to step forward on some things. So those of you that, that want to fully be removed from having any hindrances, from your life. And you want to be anointed. For such a time as this. And we, we need anointed warriors. We need anointed men of God. We need anointed women of God. In this place. Everybody can't be a singer. Everybody can't be a minister. But can I tell you. Everyone can be an intercessor. 
And these people on this line, they need to be interceded for. And the people written on this side of the threshing floor, they need to be interceded for. But someone that is hindered by disobedience of the Word of God cannot. It disqualifies you. God is great, but that is the Word. Saul was dis he was anointed and then disqualified through his disobedience. And it works still the same today. I wonder if anybody would be desperate enough and unashamed enough to just step across that line and begin to lift your hands and to lift your voice and to cry out, God, clean my heart up and make me available. I'm, I'm asking you to anoint me like you never have. I'm asking you, Father God, to anoint me for such a time as this. I want to be a warrior for you.
Brother Richie, I'm going to kill off some flesh is what it takes. Oh, flesh is gone. That's right. But it takes you denying. And it's not just on the ladies in this church. It's on the men too. It's time that men that are filled with the Holy Ghost and fire that we rise up like never before. Can I tell you that the, the husband, the, the, the father is supposed to be the ones that teach the children in the home and not the mothers? And that's what the Lord There's a drawing in this house today. There's a drawing in this house today for more of God. And now we know that there is a, there is a way that you get more of God. And that's to give Him more of you. And less to 
the world. Can I tell you I'm thankful for the turnaround that we're in? Come on now. There are those that know exactly what I'm talking about. And there are those that don't. But they shall soon see a glory coming back inside this sanctuary. body of believers. Come on now. From this day forward, if you stepped across this line, God is going to honor it. Not only is He going to honor it, but He has filled you with conviction. He's filled you with a conviction. You know that old saying, you can run, but you can't hide? He's filled you with a conviction that you can run from, but that you cannot hide. And some people look at, us, at, at at convictions as, well, that's not really fair. I've looked at it like that before. We all want to do what we want to do at times. But thank God for a conviction that helps to anchor us back down into some God reality. I'm thankful for convictions that help to anchor me those are the 120 that God used to begin a revival like this world had never seen before in Acts, the second chapter. All because some people were obedient and made themselves available. But there were 380 that did not make themselves available. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be a part of that kind of revival. Can I tell you that we're in the midst of that revival right now? We're in the midst of that kind of revival right now. I've never seen the things that I am seeing before. I've never seen it on this fashion. I've got elders that have told me it's been years since they have seen it on this fashion. Someone delivered of a bad spirit. I've seen a lot of people prayed for before because of that. It's been a long time since I've seen somebody set free from that. Right. But this morning we're leaving.
leaving a changed person. We're leaving a changed individual. Can I tell you that each and every one of us that stepped forth and made that declaration, that drew the proverbial line in the sand, God saw it. And now He's going to require more of you. Come on now, He's going to require more of you. He's going to require more of you. It all amounts to how desperate are we to see your loved one set free, to see your prodigal return and serving God right there beside you. Even if they've never gone to church here, we can still claim them as a prodigal. And we can be, we can claim them to serve God in this place. But moving forward, God has seen and He has heard everyone that made that declaration of I shall not be a hindrance. And He requires more of you. Not just for the women, but for the men. He requires more of us as well. I believe somebody, at least one person, is leaving here changed individually. I believe it today. I believe it, Sister A. Faye. I believe it today. Sister Teresa, it's probably going to be more than one that's leaving here a new, new creation. And it's a God thing. When you begin, when you begin after today, the when the flesh creeps in, and you have to say, uh uh, Jesus said no about that. Jesus said no about that. I'm not gonna be a hindrance. I'm not gonna be a hindrance to the flow. How desperate are you? To be that anointed prayer warrior. How desperate are you in the house? Maybe your family doesn't need it quite as bad as mine does. How desperate are you to be anointed? Come on now. We're known around here to be raw and real. There are areas in people's lives that, that causes them to, to be a hindrance. And I have a feeling you know exactly what it is when I say that. You don't even have to voice it. But you know when you're sitting down on the Word of God and being a hindrance. God will remove that hindrance. I've seen it before.